three uh, last live of January. And I just wanted to say good evening to everybody and thank you for joining us. Um, Dan's van video returned today. At last, at last. It's been, I don't even know how long it's been, six months maybe? Probably longer since we uploaded. So to all of you who have been waiting patiently, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for uh, waiting. So patiently waiting for Dan Van's video to return. We have um, we have two more episodes to go for Dan's video. In the next video, we're doing interior, and then there's the final wrap up video, and we that's what we filmed on Friday last week. Yeah, not Friday this week. Friday last week, we filmed the final wrap up video for Dan, and it was really really nice to see him. Um, because as you may or may not know, Dan doesn't actually work for Coombe Valley Campus anymore. He worked, he, he left Coombe Valley Campus in September last year. Um, so yeah, there's, it was really nice to have him back and he's seen all the changes to the workshop as well, which is really, really good. Um, yeah, really nice to see him, really nice to catch up. Um, but yes, two more episodes of Dan's Van, however, Next week's video is not going to be Dan's van. It's going to be the first video of the 2K T5. So I can't wait for that uh, series to start. And uh, I hope you're looking forward to it too. All right. So, yes, recapping. It's the 29th of January. I'm Lee. This is our Coon Valley Campus Sunday Q&A Live, where I get to answer your questions regarding conversions and anything else you want, really. So we'll go straight into the live chit-chat. We've so far got... Uh, Motivate is in here, he says hello, good evening my man, David Bailey says hi everyone, good evening. Um, we've got our first question in from James, uh, and he says hi Lee, I'm planning on building my own units in my T5, what wood and thickness would you recommend uh, as proper 15mm veneered furniture board is so expensive for a sheet? You're not wrong James, it is bloody expensive for a sheet of that Voringa or Moorland lightweight ply. I mean, at the moment you're looking at 120 quid a sheet plus shipping. And if you order one from the likes of Moorland, it will cost you 80 pounds to ship it. So potentially 200 quid for a sheet of ply. So what I would recommend is go to specialist timber merchants and ask them about 15 mil ply. Um, because most will have it. Do excuse me, I'm gonna clean these out whilst I'm here. Um, yeah, 12 mil ply is fine. 18 mil ply is fine for worktops. If you are just wanting to say a ply finish or you're gonna paint it or prime it and then paint it, whatever you wanna do. But if you were to have a chat with, you know, your local wood supply merchants, down here we've got Allsfords and, and all sorts of other things um, who we use. Um, so a 15 millimeter ply is still quite easily achievable to buy. Um, so yeah, get out there, have a look. I would recommend using 15, it's good. 18 is too much, 12 is good, but for longevity, yeah, go with, a, go with a 15 if you can. Uh, who else have we got going on? Oh, I hope that answers your question, James. If not, leave a further comment. Marcus Harris, good evening, Marcus. Marcus is one of our very own. Good evening, my man. Steve Frain says, evening, mate. Simon Massey says, evening, Lee. Uh, Mike Ockwell, good evening, guys. Good evening. Mark Squire says, hi, Lee. Hi, Mark. How are you doing? Steve Frame. Got a question. I'm interested in, oh, my comment's gone, a cold air intake for our T6.1. Any ideas? Yes or no? Do you know what? I don't get into T6.1 or any of the modern van tuning, really. Uh, we will be looking into tuning for our Project 2K T5 um, because I'd like to, you know, do at least a stage one map, et cetera, et cetera. Cold air intake, I would have a look potentially at the guys over at Transporter HQ or Dark Side Developments, who are a specialist diesel, VAG diesel tuner. Um, they're pretty incredible in what they do. I've never personally used them, um, but yes, there's lots of different aftermarket bits and pieces and tuning bits and pieces for the likes of T5s and T6s and things like that. So yeah, give them a shout. Failing that, have a chat with people such as Pendle Performance, uh, they do Volkswagen tuning, or if there's a local tuning house near you who do specialise in Volkswagens, then give them a shout out. Absolutely. Uh, so that's a good question. I hope that's answered it. If not, do some further. Oh, there we go. Show chat. 
There we go. Gosh. So yes, we're here to answer your questions this evening. Um, who's seen tonight's video already? Leave a comment down below. Have you seen uh, the next or the latest uh, Dan's Van video? It went live at six. Have you seen it as yet? Give us a thumbs up or thumbs down or yes, I've seen it. It would be really nice to see who's seen it so far, which is really, really good. Um, as a bit of a description where I am, we're in, I don't even want to call it a living room. We're kind of in the extended living room in our place today. Um, we've got the, the fire on behind me just to quite literally dry the laundry. Nothing glamorous. Um, but yes, having two kids and a dog uh, and all my work clothes, we try and warm it up. And it's so cold outside and damp. We can't dry it up outside. Uh, right, so next question. We have motivators. Is every time I lock my door to the keys, T6, my van makes a loud beep. Is there any way to stop that? Also, is it possible to fit a central locking button switch where electric windows? Good question. Do you know what? Motivate. Again, I can't remember your name. I'm ridiculous. Um, Every time I lock my door to the keys, my van makes a loud beep. Is there no stop that? What I'd suggest is potentially having a chat with somebody who knows Volkswagens um, and has, what do they call it, the VCDS, the plug-in system specifically designed for Volkswagens, because there might just be something up with the um, CAN bus system or a setting on there. Um, what The reason it might normally beep, I know this happens on Transit Customs, is when it senses there's a door unlocked or not closed properly. Um, so, sorry, I've just seen your comment. Goggy like doggy, but I don't bite. Nice one, boo. <laughs> That's Motivate's name is Goggy. Um, central locking button on the door handle. Later model T6.1s might have that or a button in the dash. Um, what you've got to remember is that these are um, passenger cars, so to speak. They're, they are commercial vehicles. So the ability to lock, um, the ability to lock, my daughter just waving in the background saying good night, uh, gave her a little thumbs up. Um, the ability to lock all the doors from the inside, you might find it more on passenger vehicles such as caravels and things like that. Um, but just on a regular T6.1 panel van, I'm not entirely sure myself. Whether it's retrofitted or I've not come across it myself. Um, but if you want me to have a look into it and find some further solutions, then be sure to Hit us up on an email, that's info at cleanvalleycampus.co.uk and I'll look into it for you, for sure. Next comment or question then. Why do my comments keep disappearing? Come on. Right, here we go, here we go, here we go. Andy Sibbs says, evening Lee, I want to run all electrics from a Jackery in my day van conversion. Ever done that or have any advice and thoughts? Um, we spoke about this last week, actually. I'm really interested in, in the next build we do is running everything from the Jackery or what do they call it, the Evo something or other. One of these portable lithium ion power packs, I think they're a fantastic solution um, purely because it's not limited to using them in the van. I think there's pros and cons for both having permanent setups with permanent batteries located and then having everything set up from such like a, something like a Jackery. Jackery. Um, we've, we've even had a self build come in, a high end self build come in um, where everything, and that's the 240 volt, 12 volt solar panel was all tied into this one unit. Um, and I've seen other people on other YouTube channels using them too. So good idea, it can be done. Something I'm also thinking of doing in our next van build too. By the way, as a quick Easter egg for everybody watching, does anybody recognize what's on this t-shirt, what it is and what it's from? First person to leave a comment will get sent a sticker. Um, so if you know what this is and where it's from, then yeah, I'll send you a sticker. You email me and I'll send you a sticker. Right, next comment, next comment, next comment. Uh, right, Mark Squire says, how easy is it to move the rear interior lights in a VW T5 Combi? Fairly easy. Where do you want to move them to? I know they're in a pretty rubbish position. What, Say, if you open the sliding door, the, the, the light is all the way over to what seems to be the passenger side. I think all T5 interior lights were set up for a left-hand drive vehicle. So they're pretty useless on a right-hand drive van where the interior light's all the way over the other side. 
Um, but yes, they can be moved. The wires are long enough. All the wires for a T5 interior light wiring run down the near side or you know, right-hand drive car, the passenger side. Um, and so you can move the lights and put them in different areas on the roof. You may have to cut a new hole for your light. Um, you may have to make, have a new headliner board. Um, yeah, buy a new headliner board and then relocate that light. Or if you want it in a completely different location, you can actually extend that wiring if you're fairly handy with a soldering iron uh, and vehicle electrics. I hope that answers your question. James says, Dan's idea of the pocket in the panelling was a great idea. I might steal it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, he'd seen some different bits and pieces uh, from other uh, camper vans and wanted to, now when he knew where he was going to have his bed and everything else, he wanted a place to put his phone and just other knickknacks. And so within that little pocket, there's light and a USB port as well, which I think is really clever. Uh, right. Where are we? Where are we? No one's got it right yet. No, it's not a Mustang. No, it's not Eleanor from Gone in 60 Seconds. Keep guessing. It's not Foo, it's not a chip Foo's design either. Andy Sears says, cheers, Lee. Mark Squire says, cool, thanks. What, so, yes, to reiterate, if you know what this T-shirt is, what program it's from, I'll send you a sticker. Wayne Miller says, hi, Lee, watch your videos on applying Raptor and watch the prep on your show stand, etc." But there was no mention of seam prep. I was wondering how Raptor performed over seams. Uh, Raptor is a semi-flexible solution product. I've actually seen it used on the interior door cards, the vinyl door cards of a Land Rover Defender. It's a good effect because it's tough and hard wearing and it's flexible. So yes, it can be used over sealer, excuse me, <clears throat> polyurethane based sealer, for example, uh, and it should be fine, especially in terms of flexibility too. So uh, I hope that kind of answers your question. If you need any, any more clarity, then yeah, absolutely. Make some further comments. Um, yeah, motivates this. Behind the kitchen cabinets, do you ply line behind there or leave it? Depends which cupboard it is, goggy. Yeah, see, I've got that right, goggy. It depends what you need, but say if you're building kitchen cabinets, behind the fridge we tend to leave it open so there's maximum airflow. Um, depending on the shape of the interior of the van, it might be quite curved and you want to flat back to your cupboard, so you apply that. Generally, we don't apply the back of our kitchen units because we like to have a really tight fit behind the units and the side of the van and we uh, profile all those interior parts to fit um, so there's no need for a ply back however in the airstream caravan for example we are building um, because there's not one straight line in it all the cur all the sides are really really curved there's no ply backs going into the back sorry there are ply backs going into the back of those cupboards and you've got quite a lot of room to play with as well Kian Thomas says, looks like a charger. You are right, it is a charger, but which one and which program? Uh, Wayne Miller, I forgot to add my query, it was referring to the T25. Wayne, 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 watch your videos on Applying Raptor. Oh, over the seams. So yeah, that's kind of what I had in my head. Um, do you mean the seams between the panels? So say on the front of the um, showpiece, there's seams running down where the windscreen edging is and all that sort of stuff. Um, I can't remember if we put sealant in there or not, or whether we left the original stuff in. But yes, yeah, say if you were to put your body sealant in between those gaps and paint over it, you'd be absolutely fine. You'd be absolutely fine. Uh, cool. Right. So any more for any more in terms of questions? We are 40 minutes and 30 seconds in. Um, yes. So who here has watched our video? There are 32 of you uh, watching our live right now. Um, and who's watched the Dan's Van video? I think it's 25 minutes long. So yes, you would have been uh, uh, maybe watched and finished by now for anyone that's able. So next question we have, Mark Squires, he says, where would be the best place to put rear speakers in a T5 combi with enough room for the backs of the speakers? Right, so there are a couple of solutions. 
there is a company called Audio Sport, if I remember right. And they provide you with lots of different fiberglass, molded fiberglass solutions to put things like six by nines across the top of the tower gate or barn door frame. That's a really good solution. I think they also make door cards to, so you're able to put speakers in the door cards of say a barn door or a, a tailgate for a T5 as well. So generally that's where we put them. Some people put them in the side panels. Generally the top side panels of a T5 are too slim to put a speaker in. The bottom ones might work, but then in a combi, the speaker would be right here down by your side generally not a great place. So yes, if you want some speakers behind you, a good spot is, so have a look at Audio Sport. Again, yeah, they're fiberglass manufacturers or fi fiberglass makers, and they, yeah, provide lots of different frames. So yeah, hope that helps. James has said, my other half is currently retrimming our seat. So do you know if the single passenger seat is exactly the same as the driver's side? Sorry, is that T5, James? Let's go back to your previous question. Is that a T5? Um, 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 um. I don't know if you said, James. Where is it? Maybe it's right at the top. Yes, T5. Um, yes, effectively, they are exactly the same. Um, I know they're the same seat base. So I think the only thing that differs is the seat belt buckle, even the, even the, yeah, the squabs are the same. I think even the back's the same because we've used driver's side seats on passengers before and then just swap parts over. So yeah, they're the same. Daniel Bissett. Oh, sorry, Wayne says, thanks, Dave. That was very informative. Daniel Bissett, uh, he says, how do you think second-hand camper prices will fare over the next six months? I think camper van prices over the next six months I think you're gonna level or maybe even increase again personally. Um, in terms of our business and the inquiries we've had, it's everything's just gone up. And I don't say that like I'm gloating. What I'm saying is I think, and we've even seen it in even our YouTube views. I was looking at our YouTube analytics earlier and leading up to Christmas, so September through to Christmas, the YouTube views were all the way down. So people weren't thinking about camping, you know, post-summer, leading up to Christmas, people were not interested in camps or camping at all. We obviously had our customers and they were, we were having stuff done. Um, but ever since Christmas and New Year has come out of the way, we've had the busiest month we've ever known. It has been ridiculous. And I know there's a lot of people out there waiting for quotes, and I'm sorry for taking so long to get back to you. Um, however, the interesting campers and camper vans, I think, will stay for at, like this this height of information, this height of demand will stay for probably at least another five years. Um, we're, you know, hovering over a recession. The energy prices are still high. Travel overseas and even in the UK is not guaranteed with trains and strikes and ferry companies and you know post COVID and plane baggage handler strikes and that sort of stuff. Nothing is guaranteed in terms of European and um, overseas travel. And with things like the popularity of the North Coast 500, and Wales being more and more popular and the Lake Districts, I think people are going to be investing more money into the camper van, not only as a holiday, you know, a means to get to a holiday destination, but as an asset as well. So I believe prices are fairly here, you know, are here to stay. However, on the flip side, with the ULEZ coming in into London, I think there's going to be a lot of vans coming up super cheap because people are just going to have to get rid of them or chop them in. So keep an eye on traders, keep an eye on van prices. So there's there's pros and cons. That's only the information I've gleaned from what I do day to day. Um, so yeah, I, I hope that answers your question. We managed to find a bargain with RT5. Um, you know, that was two grand, but it was the shittest power van you've ever seen. Um, and in all re reality, I probably paid too much. Um, but yeah, camper vans, I think the prices are here to stay. So yeah. Right, next one. Um, 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 
Motivate says, oh, you have a supply in Europe for rusty TUV beds with seat belts for T6s. Do you know who they are and are they worth it? I don't know who the European suppliers are for Rusty Lee, actually. It might be worth giving uh, Lee a call. Um, he's a really good guy, awesome dude, um, and answers his phone, either him or you know somebody in his office will answer the phone. So yes, it might be worth asking him. I don't know who they are, I'm afraid. Laura Becco, good evening. She says, hi, I'm thinking of adding windows to the rear barn doors of a van. I'm concerned these could be smashed and then door could be open from the catch uh, on the inside. Is this the case for other vans? Um, yes, effectively, it's the same for cars, vans, trucks. If somebody wants to get into your van, no matter how many windows you've got, whatever, whatever, someone's going to find a way into your van, sadly. Um, even if it's a smash and grab, even if they're trying to take your van. If you're concerned about people taking things from your van, um, you know, alarms, tinted windows, etc., etc. If you're worried about people getting into your van, there are deadlocks you can fit. Um, if you're worried about somebody getting into your van and then taking it away, a tracker, in my opinion, is the best thing that you can do um, for keeping hold of the van or at least knowing where it is if it ever does get taken. Um, so in terms of security with windows, it's if someone wants to get in they will it doesn't matter how many windows you've got in so i don't think having rear windows in the in your van if you think it's going to be better for you as an occupant of that van go ahead in terms of security i don't think it matters too much because if they're going to get in they're going to get in and if it does matter you quite a lot um then i'm sure there are aftermarket grills available for the inside windows of t5s because they get used a lot for builders vans and rac vans and things like that as well so it might be worth looking into that Hope that answers your question. I might have to disappear and get a drink in a second because already I'm a little bit hot and a little bit dry mouth. Right. Um, 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 next comments. Uh, Maximus and Co. Good evening, my man. Nice to see you. So shout out to you, Lee, and to all you happy campers. Unfortunately, I can only pop in to say hello. Good evening, good night, or even a good day. Uh, good evening, my man. Uh, I went and checked out his YouTube channel the other day. So um, if you want a good laugh, if you want to see his adventures, his travels, his van builds and bits and pieces, go and have a quick check, have a quick look at Maximus and Co on YouTube. Um, cool, that's what I hoped. Thank you, says James. That was about his T5 seats. Danny Sky Sykes. Sykes, Danny Sykes. Hi Lee, thanks for all your videos. They've been great help. What would be the best camp setup for a twin slider if I want to keep access open for both doors? Much appreciated. Danny, 2006 T5. Um, the question is to you, Danny, how many people are you sleeping in the van and how much storage do you need? Because if I had a twin slider in my current situation, what would I do? I would probably, I think the next full van I build is going to have a full width bed. So the twin slider is kind of perfect for a full width bed. And then you can put an interior unit behind the seats, for example, um, or you just make the most of if you've got a twin slider, you could have a full width bed, no storage at the front, and actually have your setup at the back in a tailgate or barn doors, like a rear awning, and then you could have one of those slide pods. Um, so you could do all your cooking and living and storing out the back of your van, and you still have access to twin sliders. How's that? Uh, comments. Where are they? Come on. I, I, this, I've got to be doing something wrong because I have to press buttons every time I want my comments to come back up. There we go. Right, so that uh, answer was for Danny Sykes. Sykes, yes, I've said it right. Uh, I hope that helps. Um, R1H1 says, evening. Uh, Maximus says, oh, you didn't, cheers, geez. Yeah, not a problem at all. Uh, Wayne Miller has come back and he says, returning to scenes of T25, how is best to treat them as they start to show the dreaded orange line? You mentioned polyurethane sealer. Do you have a brand preference? Um, to permanently remove seam rash, as it's known, you have to almost remove the panels, clean all the rust, or remove the rusty metal, and then go back into it. However, that's not feasible for most builds. So what, what I would suggest is you potentially get it to a body shop and see if they can sand blast out as much of the crap um, in those seams in a Type 25, 
and get rid of as much rust. You then put a rust converter in there, then a really good, um, maybe even like an oxide primer, um, a good uh, primer, a recommended primer from a body shop. I'm not a body shop guy. Um, and then, yes, you can fill it with a sealer. Again, we use a polyurethane sealant for lots of different reasons um, in and around the workshop, but the perfect one for body work, I do not know. If there's any guys out there who are body shop and painters, please let me know or maybe leave it down in the comments. But I'd recommend maybe getting in touch with some paint specialists to see what they would use. I don't want to misadvise you, so to speak. But I know the best way to get rid of seam rash in those fans is to effectively take out the panel and clean the rust from the inside out. But failing that, getting in there with a, a sandblaster or a very good detailed wire wheel, rust converter, good primer, good sealer, do you for another few years for sure. So yes, I hope that helps. My gosh, this is going quickly already. We are 26 minutes, nearly half hour into this already. Um, cool. So what, one thing I haven't asked yet, what can't believe I've missed it. Um, normally, if you're if you're watching, I I can see who you are in terms of uh, your profile name, your YouTube username, whatever it might be. But I don't know your real name. So if you fancy leaving a, a comment down below, you've never left a comment before. Um, who you are, where you're from, what vehicle you drive, and have you been away this weekend or even working on your van? Um, it's always nice to see. And if you have been working on your van and taking pictures then it's always cool to see them on Instagram so you can tag them, which will tag us in your pictures. And then what we do, if you've tagged us in a picture, we will always share it on our um, stories on Instagram too. Uh, Motivate says, can 3.6 millimeter fly line hold 6.9 speakers? No. Um, you want, I'm sure they could probably hold them up, but they would do F all for your sound quality. So, uh, no, I would say if you are wanting to put six lines in the back of a T5, for example, have a look at those audio sport covers. We fitted a set recently. What did we put them in? We fitted the one that goes across the back of the tailgate. And once it was carpeted, it looked bloody brilliant. It's a really, really good fitting item. So have a look at it. I know they're not cheap, but have a look at it. Um, Maximus says, bro, I'm letting as many people know as I can about these Sundays. So much knowledge, so much experience for what could cost us, uh, cost us van eds, a small fortune or a lot of research. Well, no, that's kind of why we're here, dude. I really enjoy giving you lots of advice. Again, when I started building vans, um, hang on, one second, guys, one second. Don, yeah. would you mind grabbing us a glass of water, please? I'm completely unprepared again. Whoops. Um, yeah, when I first started building vans, um, there was no YouTube. I used uh, Brick, uh, sorry, Club 8090 as a source of information because I was building a Type 25. And then I bought books um, from Amazon or, you know, the library or whatever it was um, to convert camper vans. We're in a different age now, it's a different medium. So being able to give you guys live advice and or videos online um, about how to build, thank you very much. Um, so do my Andrew Tate saying this, this glass ain't recycled. No, stupid. Um, it was Andy Tate, wasn't it, Don? Who was that guy who messed himself up online responding to Greta Thunberg with the pizza box? Did anyone catch that over Christmas? Hilarious. Anyway, um, yeah, so sharing a bit of knowledge do not cost me anything. And it just, you know, I, I really enjoy just giving advice and teaching and stuff like that. And it's good fun. Right, next comment, next comment, next comment, next comment. Uh, right. Laura Becker says, thank you, great advice, not a problem at all. Wayne Miller says, thanks, Lee, haven't thought of sandblasting. Motivate, where did you say I can see speakers and stools? Have a look at a company called Audio Sport. They specialise in fibreglass, speaker pods, and all sorts. I actually, in fact, the front splitter on the front of Bully, my T25, is actually an Audio Sport product. Uh, I don't think they're making them. Uh, Motivate, yes, Andrew Tate. What a hilarious situation that was. Right. 
half hour in. So if you haven't already, leave a comment for us. There's still nobody answering my question as to where they think this T-shirt is from. It's an American based YouTube channel. Um, I'm not going to give you any more clues. Let's see if anybody gets it by the end. And I'm not showing you the back of my T-shirt to give you the biggest clue, because last time I did that, I showed the internet my ass. And I had lots of friends of mine who decided to screen grab me showing off my <laughs> Transporters T-shirt last time I was sat here. So yeah, my apologies to everybody who had to witness that in the past. Good, so uh, whilst we're waiting for the next question, um, what have we got to talk about? We have got our dates confirmed um, for our campus coffee. You might have seen our social media post regarding that. If you do fancy coming to campus and coffee this year, they are based in Hellingly in East Sussex. Our first one is June the 4th. The Sunday event is on June the 4th. However, you can turn up a day early and camp on the field. Really nice chilled night. Um, I think we've actually got uh, a gin trailer coming down for that night. So that should be good. Um, as well as pizza, Thai food, all that sort of things. Um, no like bands or live music, just a nice chilled evening for everybody to relax to then have a good fun day on the Sunday. Uh, next question is in once I find my comments again. Oh my God, right, right. Michael Littler, he's come back and said, hi Lee, do you think anyone will come up with a kit to make an old diesel engine into a Euro 6 if Kaz goes ahead where I live, it will cost 10 pounds a day to drive my T4. Um, no, I think Euro 6 is a very specific thing. Again, which is what we spoke about earlier. Um, people will be getting rid of vehicles soon because it's just going to be too costly to drive your van or whatever it is in, in, in your town. The thing is, it's like, and we spoke about this last week a bit, even if you were to do an engine swap on your vehicle and you told the DVLA it was an engine swap, I believe that vehicle is still registered as what it is in terms of engine emissions until you were to have further inspections and you could prove that the engine the vehicle came from was potentially Cat 6 or Euro 6, whatever it might be. So I don't think, I mean, there might be, I haven't looked into it, there might be, however, I very much doubt that there is just going to be like a bolt on kit to magically overnight enable your vehicle to go into ULEZ. Um, I don't even know if there's any loopholes. I think the only vehicle that might not be Euro 6 or ULEZ compliant that can go into the ULEZ, ULEZ zone is like a, a registered disabled vehicle or a classic vehicle or some sort of people mover like a taxi. Oh, dear, excuse me, been a long week. So, yes. No, I'm trying to think. No, I think there's, I don't think there is going to be like a cure rule to make your vehicle a ULEZ compliant vehicle. And if you, if there is something that's going to be invented, man, are they going to be rich people? Because I'm sure that will sell quite well. Good stuff. So 29 of you watching so far, tell me who you are, where you're from, what van you've got. And um, maybe you've worked on your van this weekend. Maybe you've done con some conversion stuff. Maybe you've spent all week window shopping and researching. I'm keen to know. Let me know. And then hopefully we'll be able to answer some questions or queries or some sort of quandary. Um, right. I was going to talk about something else. What was I going to talk about? Um, those who have been following us on social media, our Airstream caravan is becoming close to um, completion. That's going to be a really exciting build. We've had our cabinet maker Terry in. He's bespoke made all the kitchen units. And um, we've got another project car coming in very soon as well. We haven't even released the first video of Project T5, 2K T5 yet, but the first project vehicle, the next project vehicle is on its way in. So that's going to be quite an interesting one. Right, Motivate says, I've heard of the key fobs for T5 and T6 are able to lock windows, etc. by keeping your finger on specific buttons. Is this true? Or do you have to uh, do another, do some magic programming? Later T6s, if you press and hold lock on the fob, 
the windows will go up and then those with the electric mirrors, the window, uh, the mirrors will fold up as well. I know most Volkswagens of that era, so call it 2007 onwards, if you press and hold the, the button, the lock button down, the windows will go up. It worked, it worked on our tour end, didn't it? If you press and held the button. And I think if you press and hold unlock, all the windows will come down too. Yeah, I'm sure that was the case. So quick update on 2KC5. Again, for those of you who've been watching our social media, I've been driving the vehicle now for two, three weeks and ironing out the creases, finding out what it needs, everything else, everything will become apparent in the video. But I've got a question to you, any of you budding mechanics out there. Um, we've got a bit of a lack of boost in the vehicle. We think we know what it is, although I haven't taken it to our other mechanic yet. Um, but anybody experienced lack of boost in their T5, T6 yet? This is a 1.9 TD 104 brake, 232. Bit of a lack of boost. Has anybody had that, experienced that? What else have we done? We've also fitted a new windscreen in the van. Um, we've done sound deadening in the van, in the cab. Um, I've secured a new seat, which is going to be quite exciting. We've secured some wheels and tyres and some parts from other companies as well. It's going to be really, really exciting moving forward. So, yes, that's going to be really, really good fun. Right, young young men young ladies gentlemen ladies and everything else um if we're not going to have many more comments and everything else this evening i think i am going to smash on i love doing these with you however if we're not getting new viewers and new comments and new questions and things um i don't know you don't really want to hear me ramble on but saying that straight away we've got jj uh jj grisel 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 uh correct me down in the comments my man um he says, I have a question. You go ahead, my man. My man? Yes. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, please do send us your question in. Send us your question. And we've also had Stuart New. He's come in. Um, how much difference does sound deadening the cab floor make? Oh, in the actual, in the T5, T6. All the difference. All the difference. Because the sound deadening is there to stop more than one type of sound coming through. On a, say on a normal vehicle, you've got three to four different sources of sound. You've got road noise for where your tires are rumbling on the road and the vibrations from the road are coming through. You can stop that. You've got the mechanical noise of the suspension and moving parts that are gonna knock and bang. You've got the engine noise, which is a constant humming. It will reduce the sound of that. Um, and then you've got, you know, driving the wind buffeting the panels and the panels actually reverberating. So there's four different sources of noise that you can stop by sand deadening the floor and the sand deadening the cab. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely worthwhile. Goggy's just uh, sat there and taken the piss out of me in the way I said insulating. So I'm not answering any more of your questions, my man. So stick that up. No, I'm joking. Uh, JJ Greisel says, I have a fan motor constantly blowing. JJ, what vehicle do you have, my man? I'll hopefully be able to answer the question a little better if you let me know the vehicle. He says, oh, here you go. He says it um, it killed batteries and I've narrowed it down to the fuel tank area and removed the fuse till I heard that fan going off. However, the engine runs fine without the fuse. 2005, sorry, 2008 T5. A fan near the tank. Is it some sort of supplement? Is it a diesel? Oh, yeah, diesel tank. A fan motor constantly blowing. Do you have a secondary heater in the vehicle, such as a diesel heater? Is it, so down near the tank, depending on what spec of vehicle you have and what it had ordered from factory on the tick sheet when you were ordering the vehicle, you obviously had lots of different options. It may have an engine preheater. We had one on our uh, Touran. And what it's designed to do in cold weather is it's designed to sense when the temperature is below a certain, um, yeah, sense when the ambient temperature is lower than a certain amount, kick in the diesel heater automatically, and then pre warm the engine before you drive away, save cracking a frozen block, stuff like that. So it may well be your van has a supplementary heater or it has a 
engine block heater or a coolant heater under the uh, under that belly pan near the fuel pan. I'm trying to think. Sorry, I'm thinking in my mind's eye now where that would be. So right under the passenger footwell, there's a huge space in front of the fuel tank. That's where that secondary heater would have gone. Have a look under there. Remove that plastic belly pan and have a look. Um, it might be a fuel pump or an actual heater under there. All right. How's that? Fuck it. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gary Plumley says, I'm in my van doing a shakedown as I just got a transit customer, a bit smaller than I wanted, but convenient for a daily driver. Good stuff, Gary. Thank you very much for your comment. Um, oh, JJ says, transporter converted before I bought it. Engine preheater sounds right. I'll check that. Thanks. Yes, so I'm sure the supplementary, who are they made by? Ebus Fascia or Abasto engine preheaters are in front of the fuel tank on that passenger side. I think. Cheers. Plenty of water. Any more for any more? Uh -huh, Laura Becco, good evening. She has made a lovely comment. She's from Norfolk. Unfortunately, I don't have a VW. Hopefully, VM or VW. Um, oh, she's retracted you. I was halfway through reading that, Laura. No, you've removed it. Are you going to put it back up? Yes. So, again, if you're watching and um, yeah, you wanted to make a comment regarding who you are and um, what van you've got and what part of your conversion you are up to. There you go. There's a nice little thing. Let me know at what stage you are in your conversion. So do you have it insulated? Thanks, Goggy. Um, do you have the carpeting up? Do you have the interior up? Do you have the bed in? You've just got a pop top in. Whereabouts are you in your conversion? That would be awesome. Uh, JJ said, I found you by accident. Sorry, how often are you here? JJ, we are here every Sunday. However, we do have our YouTube channel um, where we have um, 170 plus videos now, I think, on how to build your own camper van. So please feel free uh, to go and check them all out. We've also done 10 podcasts. We should have continued it because we had lots of fun doing them. However, they doing podcasts as well as working five days a week, as well as doing the YouTube is quite a bit of work. Um, so we did kind of drop the podcasts. However, there are 10 out there that will help you here with regarding conversion of your van. Um, and we've also got blogs uh, on our website. We sell conversion parts or we can work on your camper van for you. So that's who we are. Right, we have Peter Harrison has just checked in. He said, uh, getting a T5, but wanting to see what is happening with the Manchester lower emission zone. Getting a T5. Yes, do double, double, double check that. Um, if you can even drive a T5 or what sort of rules and regulations the Manchester lower emission zone have. Um, can you share a link, please? What's that on, JJ, for our um, podcast? So the podcast is called The Camper Van Cast. You can get it on um the itunes you can get it on spotify you can get it on all the platforms that you would normally get your podcasts on so look for the camper van cast obviously youtube is all on this channel here and what else have we got yes and our website is www.cleanbuddycampers.co.uk ha ah, laura becker's back in from norfolk i uh I, I unfortunately don't have a VW, nothing unfortunate about that at all. Uh, hopefully one day. Currently converting my first van of Fiat Doblo Maxi, also daily runner. Well done, Laura. The, do you know what? The Doblo is actually a pretty good van for the money. I believe they've got lots of good space and they've got quite wide hips because they're designed to fit in, is it a Euro pallet, like a thousand meter pallet? A thousand meter, thousand millimeter pallet. So they're a good width for a van. Stu, MCP, says, you talked last week about carpeting with different coloured carpets. How much do you need for a T3 high top? Is it a complete high top front to rear, or is it sort of three quarters? Generally, what you want to do is... Hang on, let me think. You want to measure from the front lowest point of that high top, and we're talking about the inside of the roof, you want to measure the... Uh, 
roof and then back. Measure that distance entirely. That'll be the length of the carpet you need. I would carpet the center section first, which is just over a meter. You'll be left with some sides, but I'd carpet the sides individually. So let's call it six meters of carpet. Six to seven meters of carpet. How's that? Um, max, if it's a complete front to rear, call it eight. It sounds a lot, and that is a lot of carpet. However, what we try and do, and it may only be us that does it, I don't know, but the carpet has a nap. So the way the carpet's made, the fibers will run a certain way. So if you were to cut that carpet in half, and have the carpet stuck down on the roof one side with the grain down and then the carpet on the other side with the grain up, you'll always see it in a couple of two different colours. So we try and give ourselves enough carpet to make sure the nap, the grain is all going in the same direction all the way around. So that's why I said up to eight metres. Uh, Dave Merton says, hi, as for fridges, Dometic or Alpical, they're all much of the same thing. They're all 12 volt compressor fridges. I believe half of them have the same compressors in them from like Samsung or something. Um, it's like a lot of computers using the same microchip. A lot of the internals are fairly similar. So it's just the, you know, the carcass they're in. Um, budget, Alpacals, I've never personally used. I've used Dometic, I've used uh, electron or whatever they're called. I'm trying to think, gosh. And there's another one. I can't remember. Not used alcohol, I'm afraid. So uh, to be honest, it's completely dependent on your budget. Have a look around. You can find some deals. We do sell fridges on our website as well. There is another fridge company that have recently appeared. What's the company we get emails for all the time, Don? Through for fridges. Is it through AutoTerm? Yeah, auto term are now doing fridges. I can't remember the brand, but take a look over their website. Um, yeah. Stu MTP, so is that 20 meters for the whole van? 20 meters, that's 40 square meters. That's a bit too much. I'd say, what color are you going? I only say that because, so if you were to order batches of the wheat colored carpet in two different batches the color can change slightly um, but most of the grays and the blacks they always stay the same color um, if you want to be extra extra precautious 20 meters is is great um, and then you know always have excess left over as well because what we sometimes do in a type 25 we carpet over the engine bulkhead as well just makes it all really nice and neat um, i'm not answering that question for you motivate I'm not even reading it. So yeah, that will be awesome. <laughs> Stu MCP. Uh, no, here we go. It's Simon Massey, hoping to replace front bench seats for captain seats in a T5. Front bench seats for captain seats in a T5. Can I use a driver's seat base for the passenger side? The price of a passenger base is double the price of a driver one. Yes, you can, but it's a lot of work. Why would suggest is you head over to Kiravans. If you're planning on putting a swivel in it, buy a swivel base, a rusty leaf swivel base from us via kimbellycampus.co.uk. Then head over to the likes of Kiravans and get their secure passenger seat base. So that is a, a shortened seat base that is designed to work with swivel bases to maintain the height of the seats, drivers and passengers. And it's also got, also got the added bonus of a little locker underneath as well. And it is probably half the price of a passenger seat base. So there's another option. <clears throat> Motivate, he's back. What has he said this time? I've also installed a swivel for the passenger double seat and added a hinge to it so it folds down. I have a swivel for the driver's seat, but I may have to remove it as it does. Doesn't fit my plans for the kitchen. Oh, okay. But no, I'm not reading your last one. Just to the case. Uh, I'm only joking. I'm still not reading it. 
Um, Dave Merton says, just got a small unit from you last week for my split. Hi, Dave. Uh, yes, I believe that was um, Marcus was having a chat with you about that. Uh, really interesting to see how that turns out in the split. Uh, Peter Harrison, on a T5, are there any areas that are prone to rust? Uh, I can tell you yes, because my new T5 has got rusty bits on it. Um, take a look in the driver's front arches at the bottom near the sills. The cab steps can go. And as I found out, one of the rear barn doors is completely right out of the bottom on a 2019 T5. No, that's a lie. On a 2004 T5, which is 19 years old. Oh, Motivate says, go on, please. Well, I'm not going to say the word. Um, I've completed sound deadening, but not the, I'm going to say it, I'm going to have to, insulation. Because apparently it has to be above 12 degrees. Can I complete insulation when it's four degrees on average? Uh, I have installed sand burning and insulation um, in like minus seven, to be honest. But what I did do, I had a little two kilowatt fan heater in the back of the van with me, and I also had a heat gun. And what I did, I chucked the fan heater in the back of the van like an hour before I started, warmed up all of the fabric uh, underneath, uh sorry all of the all of the fabric of the van inside and then i used a heat gun just to heat the individual panels up and the area i was about to stick the sound deadening down um same goes for the insulation as well but what is a good hint so you've got your two kilowatt fan heater in the van i normally sit the box of sound deadening right in front of the heater so the whole thing is sort of heating up as you're working how's that uh, so peter harrison no, as far as I've seen or experienced, there are no major structural areas underneath that you are worried about. However, in fact, one of the main things to go on a T5 is actually the silences. Um, if you've had a T5 or you've got a T5, you'll know that the silences seem to peel apart like onions. Um, so yes, uh, structurally, no, I don't think so. However, if you don't really know what you're looking at, and bearing in mind most of the T5, T6 is covered over by plastic belly pans. If you're looking at buying one, either get it professionally inspected if you don't really know what you're looking at, or if you can remove the belly pans to check the structural rot or the structure and the chassis underneath, uh, that is probably a good idea to do that. Uh, Laura Becco, do you think it's necessary to have a 12 volt roof fan? Not necessary, however, ventilation is very important in a camper van. Um, so if you can have a roof vent, then please go ahead. That you can get electric versions of Fiamma's Crystal 40 by 40 fan. You can get Max Air fans, they're very popular. Um, and you can get the little sort of porthole fans with a little fan. Because all you're looking for really is positive airflow. Uh, in motorhomes and caravans, bearing in mind they are constructed to a lot of guidelines, there's a lot of emphasis on positive airflow. You find vents in the floor of say a static home and then vents in the top corner of a room. So there's positive airflow the whole time. There isn't really that in the likes of a small camper van, mainly because they are such a small space because it's really easy to crack open the window or fit the wind deflectors. So you can have um, your window crack down an inch but not have rain come from the wind, if you know what I'm saying. Um, 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 um. Here we go, lots of questions coming in again. We nearly went quiet for five minutes and now it's all coming in again, this is great. Hackers9788, good evening. He says, I've got, or she, I've got a T5 where the roof headliner has been carpeted before I got it. Self-carpeted. And now one side doesn't seem to clip up, and hangs down a little. Could this clip issue, could this be a clip issue or a carpet issue too thick? Likely a carpet issue. Um, so are we talking the cab high headliner or the headliner in the back of the van? Normally, it's the strips between the headliners. The VW clips are almost a one-time use thing. Once you pull them down, you can never put them back properly. We do sell some aftermarket clips for your roof headliners. Um, and if you can't see them on the website, ping me an email um, because then we can get them sent to you, all right? Uh, right, Simon Messi says, at Peter Harrison, definitely check 
for rust under the wheel arch trim. If the screws are missing, holding that in place, road grime gets in and rots the lower part of the arch seals. Yeah. Um, Hackers9788, or are there no clips? I can see they didn't refit the handle. Handle for what? Ah, handle for the cab headliner. Yeah, if they haven't refitted, so on a, say, a basic spec T5, T6, there was only a handle on one side. Later versions may have had a sunglasses holder. Um, but yes, if they didn't, the, the headliner should clip into the window rubbers around the tops of the doors. If they're popped out of that, they will hang low. But yes, the handle on one side does hold the roof up a little bit. Peter Harrison has said, thank you, Simon. Yes. Yeah, so I think that was the first thing we said, wasn't it? Um, front arches definitely have a look down the bottoms near where they meet the sills, because like Simon has said, uh, dirt and rock can stay down there. Kian Thomas. Kian, Kian Thomas, I love watching the podcast. You know what? I really enjoyed watch, uh, making the podcast with Dan. Um, we had a real emphasis on having them well lit, and the studio being really good in terms of sound. And it was really, really good fun. Uh, and it's probably something we will start up again further down the line, but right now it's very, very difficult to, to spin all the plates we have, let alone add any more, that's for certain. Uh, Motivate says, is it true that 2016 and after T6 and onwards are coated in zinc to reduce rust? That is an interesting fact, but I don't know what, uh, I don't know the answer to that for sure. Right, we have three and a half minutes left, people. I stop this at nine o'clock. So is there any burning questions that you'd like to ask before we leave? Um, and you've got three and a half minutes to answer. Where For a free sticker, I'll send you in the post. Who knows where this car is from or what YouTube channel this vehicle is from? Um, I'm surprised no one's got it. I thought we were all petrol heads here. Um, so yes, in the last three minutes now, if you haven't made a comment, please do. If you haven't given the video a thumbs up already, please do. I see there's 28 people watching right now and only 17 thumbs up. So if you haven't already done so and you've learned something from the information I've provided today, again, I'm not begging, but if you wouldn't mind just giving it a little thumbs up, that'd be absolutely fantastic. Just as a little thank you. Um, and it just helps out the video too. So find out where the little thumbs up is. Or if you want to leave a comment, do so now we don't ask anything in exchange monetary wise for any of the things we do i'm not in that frame of mind however if you're able to give a thumbs up or a subscribe or a comment or anything like that it really really helps us as a, as a channel and it helps us provide more and more stuff like this for you guys all the time so um yes i hope you all enjoyed today's little q a i hope you enjoyed dan's van video today um there are lots of um, things moving forward, lots of things this week on the social. We've done lots of filming recently. And next Sunday, so by the time I've seen you guys next Sunday, um, the 2K T5 first video would have been up. So 6 p.m. Sunday next, sun, week Sunday. Yeah, this next Sunday. Man, it's definitely a Sunday evening, isn't it? Next Sunday, 6 p.m. is the first 2K T5 video. It's disgusting. However, it's going to be a good little watch. So next Sunday is 2KT5. Then we've got another Dan's video, then another 2KT5, and then Dan's final video. And then we might be introducing a new project as well. So look forward to that. Right. Thank you very, very much, everybody. Um, yes, if you do have an opportunity, hit the thumbs up button wherever you can find it. A little emoji, a little comment really, really helps. Um, fantastic to see you. Let's run through the last things again. Uh, Simon Massey says, thanks again for the advice, Lee. Have a good week. You too, Simon. Motivates says, thank you so much for answering the questions. You too, Goggy. Michael Littler, thumbs up. Thank you. Uh, motivate, much love, guys. Peter Harrelson, thanks, Lee. Isabel Pedley says, thank you for your advice. Just got ourselves a 2016 T6 Combi. Congratulations. And we'll be converting it this year and using your YouTube videos to help out. Best of luck. Make sure to tag at Coombe underscore Valley underscore Cams on Instagram and any progress pictures you put up or anytime you comment. Now, anytime you post a picture with us tagged in, we'll share it on our Instagram stories for sure. Dave Merton says, thank you. James says, looking forward to 2KT5. JJ says, thanks again. I'll try my best to remember. What time do you start? L videos go up at 6 p.m. on YouTube. Lives go on at 8 p.m. 
Cool. Lee signing off for another week. Thank you very much. And we'll see you next time. Go and hit the like button, please. Cool. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.